Hey folks, so here is my sort of um, micro lecture on going from a free write to your first draft. Um, and so I just wanted to um, talk to you about, so there's a writing studio sample that we're going to use, uh, where a student wrote on uh, the, that episode of The Owl House. Um, so it's connected to the same writing studio sample. Does that sort of make sense? Sort of you kind of follow the annotated bibliography research proposal for that. And then, you know, I've kind of got gotten the artifacts of the of the um, free write, uh, moving from the free write to the draft. OK, so here are the things to keep in mind. All right. So you just did a cubing exercise. And what I would sort of recommend is, I think sometimes we think about free writes as like this one continuous thing. Um, and then we just like slightly modify it and it becomes our paper. Um, and that's not really entirely true, right? So um, here, are so, here are the sort of cubing notes uh, for, from the Owl House, uh, the, and, and the free write just kind of gets extended in there. So there are, you know, the parts of the cubing exercise, summarize it, describe it, compare it, associate it, analyze it. And so what this student did is basically um, uh, use those sort of sections of the cubing exercise and then just kind of really draw out and, and just do some uh, uh, extended uh, associating um, on the movie, right? And so you kind of see this here. And so I want you to think about your free write is just letting yourself go down. Your free write is letting yourself go down this sort of rabbit hole. So then how do you move from this kind of like really kind of all over the place free write? First of all, it's supposed to be, right? So I don't want you to think that there's any, I want you to think about, um, have y'all ever seen those like movies about like the investigator who's like, I don't know, trying to solve a cold case and like they become slightly obsessed and they've got like a murder board in their house of like little strings of yarn, right? And you're like, oh my God, what is this, right? That's kind of what free writes are supposed to be. So I don't want you to think that the free write is a prototype to your rough draft. It's not. So how you come up with the rough draft really, um, comes out in several parts. So the first thing I want to say is that after you have done the cubing exercise and the free write, it's not a bad idea to watch again your film, okay? And when you're watching it, really slow down and take notes on if there's dialogue, like specific parts that you're like, oh damn, that's a good example, right? Those types of things, right? But also, um, and especially if there are no words in your um, in your uh, in your film that you're analyzing, you're going to want to take screenshots. And so that's what the student did here too. Is just kind of went through and just like paused the movie and then used um, created screenshots, right? And so depending on what um, computer you're at, like there you can Google it, but on a Mac, it's you hit you know Shift and Command and Four at the same time. Uh, and that will uh, basically create screenshots. But I would say create screenshot as many things as possible because you don't know what is going to be relevant. And those kinds of um, images are really, really important. So rewatch it, look for dialogue, look for specific uh, visuals. And that becomes really important because you're not just analyzing what happens and what was exactly said, but also like the images and how it was illustrated, right? There's a reason why we read that Blazer book, right? So music, all of those types of things. And again, if there are no words, you really, really, really want to take screenshots and like pause and like look at specific elements that are on screen because directors are basically showing you not only like through what happens in the plot, but also how they're moving that plot along based upon how they're creating creating and illustrating those characters. And especially, um, I would say definitely with this this particular example, there are a lot of really, I think in every, every story there can be really great visuals, but that becomes obviously particularly important if there are no words, right? So 
all this to say, there's not like this clean line from the free write to your rough draft, right? So you've got your stuff, you've got your free write sort of extended out. Really the idea is just jump down as many rabbit holes and provide as many details as possible. Rewrite your, uh, rewatch the uh, movie, take as many screenshots as possible, type out like exact pieces of dialogue. If you do that, it's a really good idea to timestamp those because when you're quoting from a film, you actually have to include the timestamps um, in, in APA. Um, so just sort of keep that in mind. So anyway, um, the, the next thing you want to do then is to kind of figure out what like your hook is. And, and to figure out what your hook is, you're going to have to figure out what rhetorical choices the director is making. So let's just say that uh, you are looking at representations um, of bisexuality and children's animated films, right? So that's what this, this particular example um, is a student is doing, right? So you, the key thing that you want to ask yourself, and it, it is the same question no matter what your topic is, which is basically like, is this director making choices that kind of like rely on some of the same like low hanging fruit and stereotypes that are kind of crappy? Or are they really kind of expanding the way that we are thinking about uh, whatever the topic is, whether it is age or disability or race or orientation or gender, right? So that it's like, are they challenging that common narrative? Um, or are they relying on the same low hanging fruit? Or are they doing a bit of both? And most of the time they're doing a bit of both, right? And so um, once you determine that, that central question, then from there, then you're, it goes to like, okay, how, right? What are the specific, like, what are the top uh, three or four things that this author is doing that, you know, really kind of tells a different story about like um, aging women or about social class? Or how are they like, how do they maybe, what are two ways that they like start out really good and then drop the ball in other ways, right? So just think about it as your like sort of top that when I'm saying how, okay, so like, okay, they challenge, you know, stereotypes about disability. How? How specifically? What are three top things? And you should be able to listen. They do this, this, and this. The key thing that you want to point out is that every time that you answer that question, it's like the director does this, the director does this, the director does this. So you already have your kind of thesis, which is that hook. Are they challenging common stereotypes or reaffirming them? Or are they doing a bit of both? That's your thesis. And then from there, that question of, okay, well, how specifically did they do that? That's where you're kind of like zeroing in on specific choices that the directors are making, right? Those end up becoming the claims in your paper. And you might already have some of that in your free write. And that's the kind of thing that you're going to be looking at today is like looking at your, your, your peers' free writes and being like, okay, so what would the hook be here? And like, what might be things that are, um, what might be things that are common? Uh, like, what are some of the ways that they get at the how that might end up being like the central claims in their paper, right? And so uh, you can kind of see that. And I know that we're not getting to the writing studio yet. But if like future you is just kind of like wondering how on earth um, you get from a free write uh, your notes in a free write to a rough draft, to a revised draft, that kind of thing, feel free to like skip ahead and like check out this, um, this peer, you know, this peer review draft, right? So the student's got their rough draft right here. You see that the student has included a lot of pictures, which I recommend, I highly recommend. And then the student also in purple, we've got the revised draft. And there is, you'll see obviously a huge difference. But one of the things that you're going to notice is that throughout the key thing that makes this is an, ar an argument, remember that like you want to assume that everyone has already like watched the film. So it's like your central argument is, is this director pushing the ball in like productive ways? And like, why does that matter, right? So really make sure that you have a handle on the assignment because that's gonna give you like how you're gonna be staking your client, your argument. But like all of the, the students' um, central claims focus on like several, like three or four specific things that they notice that the director is doing, the choices that they're making. And you're gonna see that because the 
director sort of becomes the subject that you're analyzing, not necessarily the film, right? Because the, if you get to like the film, it's gonna be like, well, this happened and this happened, but it's not. It's about, they, they chose to create the sequence of events, right? The director chose to illustrate um, or to give this this kind of dialogue, right? So really thinking about it as like the person behind the scenes pulling the strings, right? And how they're creating this argument. That's how you're getting at that kind of analysis. So again, your central question at your thesis is, are they, is this director challenging stereotypes um, around, you know, representations of body size or whatever? Um, or are they relying on low hanging fruit? Or are they doing a bit of both? And that gets at your thesis once you can answer that question, right? And then from there, it's like, okay, well, how do they do that? How specifically? So if I were doing wall E, I might be like, you know, um, wall E uh, is a movie that uh, while it might have a, a, an interesting message about like the ecosystem really kind of relies on fat phobia in uh, a lot of different ways, right? It represents um, fat people as being gluttonous. It represents fat people as being um, physically unhealthy and incapable of activity and also as stupid, right? Um, and those are the top three things that I would say that the directors, three ways that the directors reinforce fat phobia in Wall E. And then my job would be like, okay, I've got my thesis. The, the director's uh, the directorial choices really kind of reinforce fat phobia in these three ways. Those become the claims of my paper. And then I'm like digging in and looking for specific pieces of dialogue and imagery that get at that. So that sort of makes sense? So that's what I mean there. Um, and so I want you to think about the, I want you to think about the free write it's just kind of like the raw material that gets you to sort of see connections you wouldn't have seen before. Some of them might not necessarily go in your paper, but that's okay because you needed to write that stuff down to get at what future you wanted to write about in that rough draft, okay? So when you're looking at people's uh, free writes today, I want you to be one, thinking about what their hook is. Do they think that this author is like, or this director is challenging um, stereotypes and doing really cool new things or reinforcing stereotypes or doing a bit of both, right? That help the author or help the student, your peer, figure that out. And then from there, help them get at the how. Well, how specifically is the director doing that, right? Um, in terms of the directorial choices. So basically, you move from a free write to identifying your hook, your thesis, and then the how, answering the how, your top three or four. You don't want to have more than that, right? And those become the claims, these sort of larger sort of arguments about these specific things that the director is doing. And then your job from there is to like go in and fill in those examples. And that relies on this second part, which is that you are going to want to watch the film another time after you have figured out what your hook is and what your um, what your kind of central claims are going to be about what the director is doing and then you're going to want to watch the film again and like slow it down and like find those specific examples of like ways that things are illustrated like the sequence of events in terms of plot right um, and then also specific pieces of dialogue and finding the timestamps for those right and remember that the key is that you're when you're looking for those examples the thing that you want to think about is that you want to say okay here's the example and here's how it ties back to what I'm saying, right? So you have to like kind of do that work of identifying the example and explaining how that example ties back to your larger argument about fat phobia, right? Um, so for instance, if I'm looking at wall E and like there's this moment where, you know, the captain of the ship can, can, can't even like get out of his sort of like auto like hovering chair to like, oh, he almost like, kills the whole spaceship because he literally cannot stand. And then it, the, the whole crew, you know, uh, the, all the people in the ship, they can't even walk themselves and they're like falling out of their chairs when the, when the, um, the spaceship tilts, right? Going for those moments and like looking at the illustrations, looking at the bits of dialogue um, and really kind of being like, okay, yeah, here are these examples and here's why these examples matter and how they tie back to this like larger conversation that, um, you know, various academics have been having, right? So there are like specific moves um, that I think are gonna end up being uh, really helpful, right? But the idea first to move from that free write is, all right, what's my what's my hook 
what's the overall thing that I think that the author, that the director is doing with regard to representing X, right? Whether it's age or orientation or disability, et cetera. And then how, how specifically are they doing that? And then come up with it just like off the top of your head. They do this, 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 and this, right? Three or four things, limit it to that. And then you go in and find those examples, all right? So that's how you move from your free write to your rough draft. But I, I want you to let go of this idea that the rough draft has to be, or that the free write is just gonna be this slightly modified, um, that your rough draft is gonna be your slightly modified free write. Um, that rarely happens, uh, but that doesn't mean that free writes aren't valuable. They are like super duper valuable because it's kind of like you're doing all of this brain work that like, it's like when we have ideas, they're so messy and chaotic, but we have to let ourselves jump down all of those rabbit holes so we can get all those things out on paper. And then that kind of like turns down the chatter so that then we can kind of find the order in that chaos. And if we never have that moment of chaos, we're never gonna see those kinds of connections that we wanted to see before, okay? So just sort of keep that in mind and sort of be okay with that process. And so your job today is to like really help your peers find the beginnings of the order in that chaos, okay? All right, so that's my lecture. Um, again, you know, if you want to kind of see how that process like sort of transitions, you know, check out how the student moves from like a cubing exercise to their rough draft to their revised draft. So if you want to skip ahead just to see how the student did that, you're, you can totally do that if you feel like you need more like water wings in terms of moving from that free write to the rough draft. Um, sometimes that's really helpful for people just to see that behind the scenes process because I don't think we often see how people move from like one kind of element of pre-writing to a rough draft to a final draft, okay? And I really want this class to sort of demystify that process for you, okay? All right, so that is my lecture. You've listened to it, um, and hopefully you learned some good uh, gems in there. The key thing is just to remember that your free write is not like a rough draft of your paper, right? It's just kind of a place for you to like get ideas down that may or may not apply to what you're doing, okay? And then remember to watch and re-watch and take notes on that thing that you're analyzing. Like know it inside and out. Become like the expert on every little plot point so that you're like, cool, I can totally talk about this now. I know this film, all right? That's gonna make sure that basically once you get to that rough draft, it's gonna kind of write itself, okay? Super.